50 millimeters. It's a great all-rounder focal length. For a lot of us, it's our first foray into a nice, fast aperture prime lens, the Nifty 50. It's a cheap and easy way of getting into seeing what shallow depth of field can do, maybe doing some portraiture. But 50 mil is so much more than just portraiture. So let's talk about the many possibilities of a 50 millimeter lens because it's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring a brand new fresh photography tutorial. And this week, of course, is no different. We are talking about the many possibilities of a 50mm lens. Now, I love, as I'm sure a lot of you do, I love a 50mm lens. It was my first ever prime lens, a 50mm f1.8 nifty 50, and it opened my eyes to what shadow depth of field can be. It makes you feel like a real photographer because you've got that blurred background. Yes, I know these days phones can kind of blur the background digitally and all that kind of stuff. And I'll be honest with you, some of it looks pretty good, but nothing beats that real deal experience of your first prime lens when you get that beautiful bokeh in that portrait. But 50 mil lenses are so much more than just a bokeh machine or just a portrait lens. They can do so many different things. And a 50 mil is such a great focal length for a lot of different types of photography. Now we've talked in the past about 85 mil lenses. We've talked about 24 to 70, which is a great all rounder zoom lens. The 50 mil sits in a very sweet spot between 85 mil, which admittedly is quite tight. You know, great for portraits, great for that kind of stuff, but it is quite a tight focal length. 35 mil, beautiful, but it can be a little bit wide sometimes. 50 millimeter, gives you a great look to your photos. It's wide enough to shoot some landscape. It's wide enough to get a nice bit of environment in your shot, but it's also tight enough to separate your subject from the background, to get just enough lens compression to really help actually isolate the subject and make them the absolute focal point of the image. The most obvious example of this is, of course, portraiture. 50 millimeter makes for a great portraiture lens because you can get that nice shallow depth of field, especially if you're shooting f1.8 or f1.4 or even f1.2, but it also allows you to get a little bit of the environment in if you want to pull back a little bit. Of course, you could stop down f4, f5.6, something like that. It's going to allow you to get more of an environmental portrait. So 50 millimeter, you know, just by moving yourself forward and backwards allows you to really isolate your subject or bring more of that environment to life. It's a great studio portrait option as well, because it's not so tight that you need to back up quite far to get a good head and shoulders, but it's not so wide that you're gonna get problematic situations with your background. But like I've been saying the whole way through this video, it's so much more than just a portrait option, so much more than just a portrait lens, because you can shoot almost any type of photography with a 50 millimeter lens. Now I say almost, astrophotography is gonna be a little bit more difficult, and of course wildlife photography maybe a little bit more difficult, but otherwise you have got a whole host of options available to you at 50 millimeter. This is the lens that if I could only take one prime out with me, 50 millimeter tends to be the one. I like that it's a little bit tighter than 35 mil. If I'm going for something like food photography, product photography, 50 millimeter allows me to really hone in on a specific item within the frame. I can still fill the frame with other things to kind of accentuate the main subject to really pad that out and give a real nice feel to the overall photo but 50 millimeter allows me to really focus in on that specific subject similarly with landscape it's wide enough to get those nice wide vistas but it's absolutely tight enough to focus in on a subject within landscape now we've talked in the past about how finding a subject in your photo is one of the main ways of not only deciding how you're gonna compose your photo, but also having an item within that frame that your viewer's eye can naturally rest on. A 50 millimeters is tight enough to make that job just a little bit easier. Much like how with a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens, you can of course adjust things by zooming in and out. A 50 millimeter lens allows you the option to move yourself forward and backwards to change the perspective of the photo. Now, of course that's true of any prime lens, but 50 millimeter is such a, an all rounder feel to it, or such an all rounder look to the end result that you can get all kinds of different photos. So I mentioned food photography, product photography. Those are two that I would regularly use a 50 millimeter lens for. Lifestyle photos can look fantastic as well. So for example, if you're shooting commercial photos of people doing things or interacting with an object or a product or something like that, 50 mil is a great way of just isolating them enough from their surroundings 
while still including enough context around them to actually kind of inform the overall photo. It's not going to be as isolating as 85mm, but it's going to be more isolating than something like a 35mm or a 24mm, even if you're shooting a fast aperture with those lenses. Of course, street photography can work really well with a 50mm lens as well. 50mm lenses can often be pretty small, especially if you're going for a nifty 50 f1.8 version, and that allows you to move around with a bit more subtlety. Now, of course, those nice bright apertures are going to be great for lower light as well, so especially if this is your first prime lens, it's going to be a great way of getting in with post sunset shooting. So blue hour, maybe even into low light around the city, 50mm can be a great way of experiencing that for the first time because you've maybe got f1.8 or f1.4 or even f1.2 to play around with. Something else which I think is really important, which I haven't mentioned in the other many possibility videos, is how well this works with an APS-C camera. So one of my first proper DSLR cameras was of course APS-C sensor. And so a 50mm was much closer as a full frame equivalent to an 85mm lens, which was really interesting and actually a really great way of kind of shooting and learning a bit about portraiture, but about composition in general. You know, a 50mm lens on a full frame camera is fantastic. That's a great all rounder. But a 50mm lens on an APS C camera is a great way of having a perfect portrait or studio option at around an 85mm equivalent. I think that's a really important thing, and I think for someone you know getting really into photography, that looks fantastic. You know, that allows you to capture some really great photos. And that's an important thing because it's going to excite you. It's going to push you to learn more, to do more with your lenses and with your camera. Now, I haven't even mentioned video, but of course, all of this applies to video as well. 50 millimeter is a great focal length to shoot video because it can isolate your subject within that frame. You can get that lovely cinematic look. It's just a very, very useful focal length to use for a lot of video projects, whether you're shooting outside, whether you're shooting indoors, whatever it might be, 50 mil is wide enough to take in a bit of the surroundings, but tight enough to really focus in on your subject. And that's the key thing, I think. It's all about your subject, and a 50mm allows you to absolutely make it all about your subject, much like an 85mm, but much like a 35mm, it allows you to take in some context around your subject. It's a great middle ground, I mean, pretty much literally, right, between 35mm and 85mm. And I think generally, if there's only one prime lens that I can take out with me, it's going to be a 50 millimeter lens. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts about 50 mil. Is there anything you think we've we've missed? Any other opinions you might have? Pop them down in the comments. I love reading through all of that stuff. So absolutely get it down there. There'll be a list of different 50 millimeter lenses you can check out down in the description. So absolutely go down there and check them out. Of course, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, though, all that's left for me to say is, as always, thanks for watching.